God shall be whole and not another. We brought nothing into this world. And it is certain that we carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken the way. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, let me know mine end. the number of my days that I may be certified how long I have to live behold thou hast made my days as it were a span long my age is even as nothing in respect of thee verily every man living is altogether vanity. A man walketh in a vain shadow and disquieteth himself. In vain he heapeth up riches and cannot tell who shall gather them. Now, Lord, what is my hope? Truly, my hope is even in thee. Deliver me from all mine offenses. Make me not a rebuke unto the foolish. When thou with rebuke dost chance a man for sin, thou makest his beauty to consume away as it were moth fret in a garment. Give men therefore is but vanity. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and with thine ears consider my calling. Hold not thy peace at my tears, for I am a stranger with thee and a sojourner as all my fathers were. O spare me a little that I may recover my strength before I go hence and be no more seen. Lord, thou has been our refuge from one generation to another. For the mountains were brought forth ever the earth and the world were made. Thou art God everlasting and a world without end. Amen. You may be seated. service of remembrance and love and memory of mirrors Lily Bell Jones Scott we gather today to give praise and honor to God even in a time like this God is worthy to be praised amen we, we, we're not going to be remiss that it is Somewhat a sad occasion, but on the other side, there is rejoicing. 
And so at this time, we will proceed with our order of service uh, with opening hymn by Mr. Lee Bowen, Old Testament and New Testament from our associate minister, Bookman. Um, prayer, we'll come back with the prayer. Another selection by Mr. Lee Bowen, a poem by Ms. Trinity Martin, remarks by Mr. Gregory Martin, and we will come back uh, for the selection before the message at the request of the family and at the directions of the funeral home. All remarks and solos should be performed at the lectern on the floor and not at the pulpit. That is the direction of the funeral home. Thank you. worthy of all praise even in times like these we do give honor to dr. Marshall who will bring us words of comfort and certainly we do give honor to this bereaved family friends and each and every one who came out today to share in this homegoing service of sister Lily Bell Jones Scott and we thank and praise God for the legacy of her children that she leaves behind. Martin family, Jackson family, Mole family, Kraft family, and everybody who knew her. We praise God for her. She was a long time a member of Jehovah Baptist Church and when she was able to come, she would be there. 
I guess most of y'all know she was a fine dresser. <laughs> she was a classy dresser. So we praise God for this homegoing service of hers, and we will bring you words of comfort to comfort each and every one of us, coming from the Old Testament scripture of Psalms 121, which reads, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. The Lord is thy keeper. Amen. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. Hallelujah. Even from death, God shall preserve us. He shall preserve thy soul. Amen. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Words of comfort coming from the New Testament are taken from 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, beginning at the 13th verse. And it reads, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even to them also which sleep in Jesus, will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall ascend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo. <laughs> then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Oh, glory to God. We just live for him. Glory to God. And we too will see our sister again. Amen. God bless you, family. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Shall we go to the throne of grace? Father, our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. We gather in this Bethel spot on this day. The scripture says, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we are cognizant of the fact that even before this day came, before the world was created, you knew we would be here at this time. But you still allowed the psalmist to pen the word. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It's a good day because you're God and you're good all the time. It's a good day because you're God who never fails. It's a good day because you're too wise to make a mistake. You're too just to do wrong. It's a good day because we've gathered to celebrate the life of Miss Lily Bell Jones Scott. Thank you, Father. She was yours in the beginning. 
Would you loan her to this world and to this family? Your word only promises three score and ten, but look what you did, God. You gave her more than that. You gave her 86 years. So we got something to be thankful for. Because many didn't make it this far, but look what you did, God. You allowed her to live long enough to see her children grown. Thank you, Father. You allowed her to live long enough to see her grandchildren and her great-grandchildren. God, we say thank you. And we give you the praise and we give you the honor and the glory. Thank you for her life. Thank you for her legacy. Thank you for the memories that were created in these 42 years of knowing her. We ask now, God, that you grace and bless this family as only as you can. Bless your service. We ask you, God, that you would comfort this family, not only this day and in this hour, but in the weeks to come when the phone calls have stopped, the visits have stopped, and when they have to go back to life, be with them. Fill that gap, Lord, with great memories. Let them know, dear God, that even though she is not physically with us, her memory lingers on. And then, God, we thank you for your word that reminds us that we will see her again. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We ask all these blessings in the name of the Father, Son, and His Holy Spirit. Amen. Favor with another selection by Mr. Lee Bowen. I'll be all right. What's given on to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is the head of all our lives. Reverend Marshall and to the Poor Men Association, and to especially to the bereaved family. I don't see anything on the obituary that says something about a funeral. I don't see I don't see nothing about a funeral. That's right. It's a service of remembrance. Yes. And we should be just jumping up now and shouting. Because when I when I read it said when a baby comes into the world, you're supposed to cry. And when a soul is going on home, you're supposed to rejoice. <clears throat> so loosen up your seatbelts. Loosen up your seat belt. Let's praise the Lord. Let's do what the, the, the uh, obituary said. It said, Remembrance. The family asked me to do this song, and I'm going to try to do it. But they who know it, you can get up in the background. All right? Make a big choir. Amen? I'll be all right. Oh, I'll be all right.
of all, um, the poem I'll be saying today, it'll be, it's called Grandma. If flowers grow in heaven, on land that's wild and free, Lord, place some in my grandma's arms and tell them they're for me. Please tell her that I love her and I miss her every day. And tell her that there's, there's still so much that I would like to say. Remembering her is easy. She's in everything I do. I miss her so much every day, but I know she's safe with you. If tears could build a stairway made from all the pain, I walk right back up to heaven and bring her back again. Lord, please take care of her, and I hope she will see that she was such a special person and a special grandma to me. First of all, getting our honor to our Lord and Savior, creator through our perfect will, to our pastor, to Minister Bookman, to Anita, to our deacon, family and friends. That's so much I can't say about Little Bell Jones Scott, but I never called her that. I always called her mommy. If anything I can say about Little Bell, and I'm pretty sure you all can agree, it's one thing about it, she made us laugh. And sometimes she made us mad. <laughs> but most of all, she made us love her because we knew that she loved us back. So as I stand here and I say to my wife and my sister-in-law, Debbie, to my brother-in-law, Richard, my nephew, Marcus and Preston, and for all the ones that loved her, on the count of three, I want y'all to do something for me. When I count to three, on the third one, I just want everyone to shout and say, we love you, little bell. We love you, little bell. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet, baby. <laughs> But most of all, I just will say thank you all for all the love and support that you showed Debbie and Tam at this time and the moment. The phone calls, the thoughts, the love, the prayers. And last but not least, the last thing I can remember my mother-in-law before she left, she asked to hold my hand. And I looked and I said, Mom, it has been my pleasure being your son-in-law. She looked back at me and she said, you're welcome. <laughs> so again, as I count to three, we're going to shout out, we love you, little bell. One, two, three. We love you, little bell. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hey, how y'all doing, family and friends? I know I'm not on the program, but I'm on the schedule. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? Because for y'all who don't know me, that's my grandma. You know what I'm saying? And Little Bell was the truth. You hear me? And that woman did not play. And she ain't played with nobody, and nobody was going to play with her. I remember that lady right there. She said, Preston, I tell you to do something, you go do it. You know what I used to go do? I go hide in tan bed. <laughs> Because if I wasn't going to get it from her, I'm going to get it from Debbie when I get home. <laughs> I said, no, we're going to go hide Tam bed. You know what I'm saying? But one thing, I ain't going to hold y'all up. One thing about that woman there, I was raised in the church. I mean, I still love the Lord to this day. But one thing about that woman, she always told me, son, I'm blessed and highly favored by the Lord. Oh, and she stood on that. Yeah. And she always told me that. Every time I would talk to her, call her, son, ain't nothing bothering me. And I'm blessed and highly favored by the Lord. And I want to leave y'all with that, because that's what she left me with. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Amen. She is all right. Yes. And she is blessed and highly favored by the Lord. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Amen. 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 As the songwriter just said, she's all right. She's all right. Amen to God. Be the glory. I want to say on behalf of Jehovah Baptist Church, First Lady, and I and the officers and members, we extend our deepest sympathies and continual prayers. We're not just praying for you today, but always. 
Amen. As we reflect upon her life and her legacy, I'll say this before we get started. One thing that stands out, I was just reflecting, I've been pastoring Jehovah this year be 43 years. So that means I've known this family for 42 years. And one thing that stands out, uh, her father was a deacon of the church. And he was Deacon Moe. Deacon Woodrow Moe. And let me tell you, he was a deacon. Strong deacon. And through him, I got to know his family. And one thing that I learned very quickly, you know, we're living in a new age now. Um, at the end of each service, when they would be there, when they were in service, Sister Lily Bell, Scott Jones, Jones Scott, she would make it her business with her family, and they would come and speak to me and First Lady. They wouldn't rush out the door. They would say, we got to go speak to the pastor. And because of the training that she has, I know the family. And it's good to see her legacy live on. Amen. Amen. We praise God for you all, and we praise God for the work that is still being done through her family. So we want you to know that we love her, we love you all, and our prayers are continually with you. Amen. Uh, she loved her family. And when her father and mother got to the point where they couldn't take care of themselves, she was right there. Amen. And when she got to the place where she couldn't take care of herself, her family was right there. And I want to say to y'all and say to y'all who have been by her side, job well done. Amen. Job well done. I want us, the family asked that we do this song, and we're going to do a little bit of it, and we're going to move on into the Word of God. And the song is If You're Talking About Jesus. Jesus was her friend. And before you leave today, I hope he's your friend. If you're talking about Jesus, if you're talking about Jesus, if you're talking about Jesus, oh, he. If you're talking by my Jesus, if you're talking by my Jesus, if you're talking by Jesus, oh, he. I had to call on him sometimes. And I found out he's a doctor in your sick room. He's a doctor in your sick room. He's a doctor in your sick room. Oh, he a friend of mine. I don't know about you whether they ever been in trouble. He's a lawyer in the courtroom. He's a lawyer in the courtroom. He's a lawyer in the courtroom. Oh, he a friend. Of 
My dad used to say this. He's my bread when I'm hungry. He's my bread when I am hungry. He's my bread when I'm hungry. Oh, he a friend of mine. There's a man over the river. There's a man over the river. There's a man over the river. He give inside to the blind. I ain't got long to sing it, so let me go and say this. If you talking about Jesus. If you talking about Jesus. Talking about Jesus, oh, he a friend of mine. Church, I met him one Friday. That was my day. Church, I met him one Friday. I don't know what your day was. Oh, I met him one Friday. Oh, he. If you're talking about Jesus, yes I am. If you're talking about Jesus, if you're talking about Jesus, oh, he a friend of, of mine. Oh, tell me, do, do you know him? Oh, tell me, do you know him? I'm asking for a witness now. Oh, tell me, do you know him? Oh, he a friend of mine. Let's go up a little higher. He's a friend of mine. 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 Talking about my Jesus, talking about my Jesus. Yes, he's Mary's baby. He's a rose of Sharon, bright in the morning star. Jesus is my friend. He woke me up this morning. He woke me up on time. Had my health and strength, clothing my right mind. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. You didn't have to do it, but I'm glad you did. He saved my soul. He saved my soul. Did he save your soul? Did he save your soul? If you call his name, if you call his name, He'll pick you up, turn you all around. He'll place your feet on a holy ground. Put you on a street, the straight street. Talking about my Jesus. If you're talking about Jesus. If you're talking about And this is where you put your hands together and just praise him.
God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a friend of mine. But before we leave, is he your friend? Singing is all right, but this is your friend. Praying is all right. Shouting is all right, but this is your friend. Attending church is all right, but this is your friend. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. We ask for your prayers. You pray for us. Out of the gospel of John, chapter 11, Verses 1, 2, and 3. This is a detailed story, so I don't have time to read a whole lot, but I encourage you to revisit this story. I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. Gospel of John, chapter 11, verses 1, 2, and three says, a man named Lazarus was sick. He lived in Bethany with his sisters, Mary and Martha. This is the Mary who later poured expensive perfume on the Lord's feet and wiped them with her hair. Her brother, Lazarus was sick. So the two sisters sent a message to Jesus telling him, listen, Lord, your dear friend is sick. Lord, your dear friend is sick. And I want to use two subjects. I, I was working with one, but that confirmation of the second scripture minister Bookman read, let me know I need to still put this one in. But the first subject I want to give is what a friend we have in Jesus. And the second subtopic is I'll see you later. What a friend we have in Jesus. And if Sister Joan Scott could say something, she would say, I'll see you later. Praise God. Let us pray. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and grief to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptation? Is there trouble everywhere. We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can you find a friend so faithful who will all your sorrow share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to, Lord, to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we ask you now to have your way in this service. You be glorified, the word be magnified, and the people be edified and encouraged through this message. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. What a friend we have in Jesus. Knowing the personality of Sister Scott, she was a friend to many. Proverbs 17, 17 says, a friend loveth at all times. 
and a brother is born for adversity. It's good when you have friends. All of us need a friend. Someone we can talk to, someone that we can share our deepest secrets. Someone who we are not afraid to be exposed to. That we don't have to worry about them telling on us and putting our imperfections in the social media. Someone that you can go to and share good times and bad times. We all need a friend. We need a true friend. We don't need people who just say yes. We don't need people who just agree with everything we say and everything we do. That's not a true friend. And when you have a friend in Jesus, you got a friend. As we look at this text today, Jesus, the Bible says, was a friend to Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. Notice the text, it, it named all three of them. And, and one thing about God's love is that God's love does not show favoritism. His love, he loves us, he loves us. Uh, individually and understand when you love somebody individually you can't love two people the same way did y'all know that and the reason you can't because those two people are not the same but just because uh, the love between you and Jesus is different from the love of, of, of me and Jesus doesn't mean that he loved me less or love you more it's that he loves us According to who we are. Well, loves us according to our personality. I love a lot of folk. Help me Holy Ghost. And some people you got to love close and some people you got to love far off. I just might well tell you the truth. Everybody can't be in your circle. Trust me, Jesus had 12 disciples. But he had three of them that kind of stuck closer than the other. Another thing about the love of Jesus, as we notice in this text, is that his love is not a pampering type of love. You know, when you pamper somebody, you just spoil them. You don't let them want for nothing. You don't let them cry. You don't, you don't let them feel anything. And, and, and that's not a healthy type of love. You know, you give baby pampering love, but after a while you got to give that baby a little different kind of love. Jesus' love is not a pampering love, but it is a love of perfecting. Which means it is a love that is to help you mature. Yeah, we, we need people that love us in a way that helps us mature. What do you mean, tell you when you're right? And tell you when you're wrong. Tell you when you're wrong, even if you stop speaking for a month or two. Can I help somebody? See, we've gotten to the point where parents want to be friends to their children. And you pampering them and, and they 40 and 50 years old, you pampering them. You're not helping them to mature. You got to understand that one day they got to get out on their own and they, they got to re meet the real world. And I said all that to say this. Jesus was a longtime friend of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. But being a friend to Jesus does not shield us from sickness nor death. You see, sometimes people fool you. They give you a misconception. Well, when you become saved, all your troubles is gone. That is a lie, 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 lie. When you come saved, you never sin again. Lie, you just sin. 
When you get saved, you never make another mistake. That no, 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 no. The Bible says we all sin and come short of the glory of God. Help me, Holy Ghost. You see, the word says that 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 they sent word to Jesus that their brother, his dear friend. Notice they put that dear on the end. That dear at the beginning. They say he's not just a friend; he's a dear friend. They knew Jesus. Jesus knew them. They, they knew if they can just get the word to Jesus, everything would be all right. That's the kind of faith we need to have. We need to have the kind of faith that if I can just get the word to Jesus, everything would be all right. That, that the way you get the word to Jesus is through prayer. And at the news, at the news Jesus could have done several things. When you go back and read the text, you find out that he didn't drop his schedule he didn't change his schedule he didn't rush to bethany he kept on about his business for two more days that don't sound like a friend on the surface he went about and did what he had to do he, he could have did several things he could have healed them from a distance he could have went right away but we got to understand in our growing faith that delay is not a denial he may not come when you want him but he's always on time. He, he delayed this for a reason. The, the messengers who came took them two days to get to Jesus. And by the time they got back uh, to, 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 to Lazarus' house, he had been dead. And now he's been dead for four days. And Jesus said, you know, we need to go and check on Lazarus. He's asleep. He said, well, if he's sleeping, why mess with him? Why bother him? He's just resting. And Jesus had to break it down. He said, no, he's dead. But Jesus, he waited. He, he waited and we, we searched this. He, he, he did it for the reason that he sought to strengthen them. Who was he strengthening? Who, who, he was targeting the disciples. He wanted to let them know that there's nothing too hard for God. He was trying to help Mary and Martha. He wanted them to learn that he's more than a teacher and a healer. That he not only can heal the sick, he can raise the dead. He wanted to show the Jews, oh, those Jews who were there moaning with Mary and Martha, amen, who, who were sitting there whispering under their breath, I thought he was their friend. But he didn't show up for the funeral. Jesus teaches us a lesson in a time of death that when death occurs, men will say things like, don't cry. I wish people would stop saying that. Don't cry, be strong. But Jesus shows us a lesson that crying is all right. Look at somebody say, crying is all right. Man or woman, you can cry if you need to cry. Crying is healthy. It releases an inner emotion. Crying is not a weakness and it does not, it does not mean that you are not strong. Prove it to you. True. Real quick. The Bible says in this same chapter, Jesus wept. That's the strongest man I know. Let me deal with that just for a minute. He wept. The Bible says he wept. Now, I must admit that this response can puzzle you. I wonder why, when you read this verse, I must admit we must ask this question. Why is the king of kings and lord of lords breaking down and crying in a moment like this? Why is he who holds the power of life and death in the hands uh, uh, weeping? Why is he crying in this situation of death? The Bible says Jesus wept. As you examine the story, it seems like to me, one of the reasons he wept was that he was crying for the family. Because when you, when you read the story, beginning with verse 1, you'll see that it says a certain man was sick named Lazarus, amen, and, and his sister Mary and Martha, they, 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 uh, they call upon Jesus. This was Mary who had anointed his feet with expensive stuff. Therefore, they sent for him, Lord, thou whom thou lovest is sick. And Jesus said in verse 4, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. I learned in Romans 8, 28, a long time ago, that all things 
work together for the good of them that love God and are called to his purpose. Sometimes God allows things to happen that he may get the glory and that you may be strengthened. You have a bit of faith, but you don't have enough faith. He wants your faith to, to elevate. He wants your faith to grow. He wants your faith to exercise because when they sent for Jesus, they sent for him to come and heal Lazarus. Get him up off of that sick bed. And the Bible says that, that Jesus said, uh, the disciples said, Lord, again, if he sleep, why are you going to mess with him? And Jesus said, therefore, listen, listen, he's dead. I need to go see about them. And then they said, well, you know, you, if you go back to Bethany, you know, they got a death threat on you. And then one of the disciples said, well, let's go die with Jesus. And so, therefore, when he got there, the Bible says, when, he, when Jesus, therefore, saw her weeping and the Jews weeping, and he came there, he groaned in his spirit, and he said, where have you laid? And they said, Lord, come and see at that point. Begin to cry. You see, Lazarus, the friend of Jesus, as we mentioned, had two sisters, and they came to town. He would, when he came to town, he would stay at their house. He, he, he knew their family. He was not just a friend, but a close friend. As a matter of fact, one of the first persons that they call upon was Jesus. And, and when Jesus came to meet with them, he could see their pain. He could see their suffering. He could see the effect of them losing a loved one that filled their eyes with tears. And, 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 and in fact, when he showed up on the scene, Mary and Martha said, if you had been here, it's almost like they blamed Jesus. If you had been here, my brother would have died. They spoke it in Greek, but they were really speaking in truth because nobody dies in the presence of Jesus. I don't know about you, but I believe, I believe because of sympathy and empathy which Jesus had for them, he was moved to share in the loss of a loved one. And so the scripture says he wept. I believe, uh, I believe he thought about the memories of Lazarus and he couldn't just shake. I believe that they looked back in retrospect and thought about the days that they laughed and cried together and suffered together. And the Bible says he cried. Cried not only for the family, but perhaps he cried because he too suffered a loss. When you lose someone, quote unquote, in your life, it's a loss. It's a loss in the sense of the relationship has changed. You can't reach out and touch them again. You can't, you can't pick up the phone and call them again. You can't go to the home and visit them again. That's a loss. Understand, Lazarus was his friend. It's possible he traveled with him, eaten with him, shared common interests, and had close friendship with him. However, uh, the friend of Jesus is now gone. That relationship has been broken, so he felt the pain of losing. But there was one other reason, I think, that he cried. He cried because he knew he had to bring Lazarus back to a wicked world. A world where people will lie on you. Glory to God. A world where they'll scandalize your name and call you everything but a child of God. Uh, and, and a world where you have to continue to go to doctor's appointments and where bills keep coming. I don't know about you, but the one thing the Bible says is that he wept. In a world where people will lie on you, and I've learned that, that when you are alive, when you are alive, they'll lie on you and they'll lie on you when you're dead. But there's one other reason I think he wept. Jesus knew that he himself one day would face death. And so he knew there would be so much pain and suffering and sorrow among this family. So death, for you see, death is a conclusion to our lives in this world. And one day, each of us will face the reality of death. You can ignore it. You can, you, can, you can do everything on the outside. You can take pills to, for, to long life and longevity. But guess what? Every day you're dying. Every day we are closer to the grave than we are from the cradle. Maybe that men would be offered by death in our time, but reality shows that, that the, uh, the loved one would be left behind and the pain and sorrow that each of us will face. And the Bible says, and Jesus wept. But this is the verse that begins intriguing me because something miraculous was about to happen. When you go down and read in verse 34, he asks the question, where have you laid him? 
They said, Lord, come and see. The Bible said that Jesus went to the tomb of Lazarus where his friend was. And he was dead and buried. And he told them to roll the stone back. And this is where, where you can begin to shout. Because it was at this point that the scripture proclaims in Jesus there's power in life. And I just want to tell somebody that no matter what you're going through, there's power in life. He, he, he says, he says to, to Mary and Martha when they question him, he says, I am. I, I was and I, and I will be. But he says, I am. Yeah. Glory to God. He spoke God first. He says, I am. He's uh, the same I am that Moses talked about. When he went on the, the back side of the mountain and saw that bush burning and, 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 and God told him to go tell Pharaoh to let his people go. He said, well, when I go talk to him, who shall I tell them that sent me? He said, tell them that I am sent you. This same Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead. See, there were some people he woke up that just died. Hmm? There were some people he woke up that, that were on their way to the grave. But this person had been in the grave. Let me tell you something, it doesn't matter whether you're on your way to the grave. Glory to God, whether you're, whether you're on your way to the grave, whether you're in the grave, he says, I am the life. And the resurrection. For you see, I heard and I heard Inez Andrew said, Oh Mary, don't you weep. Oh Martha, don't you moan. Yes, Pharaoh's army got drowned in the sea. She's trying to remind you of the God of ages. That the same God that made a way back then. He's the same God that can make a way today. And I can hear the Lord when he said, show me where you laid him. And when they show, yes, them where they laid him. It's not because he didn't know. Yes, but he knows where you are. He knows where I am and he knows where you are. Yes, he knows everything you feel. And he says, show me the place uh, where you laid him. <laughs> and the Bible said that when he got there, he looked up to heaven. Uh, and he said, Father, uh, yeah, uh, for your glory. Uh, yes, for your glory. Uh, allow me to do this. Uh, thank God. And he looked at the grave uh, and said, Lazarus, uh, come forth. Uh, and I heard somebody say, hush. Hush, somebody's calling my name. And I heard Jesus spoke a word to Lazarus. And the reason he's a personal God is because he saves one by one, he raises one by one. Can I get a witness? If you just said, Come forth in a graveyard of dead people, there would have been an immature rapture. Everybody would have got up and think it was the rapture because you read the scripture that in that day when the trumpet of God shall sound, the dead in Christ are going to get up. And Jesus wanted to be so specific. He wanted to be detailed. He said, Lazarus, come forth. Look at the power of his word. Just a word from God will speak life in your dead situation. Whether it's three days or whether it's four days, God is able. He's able. Can I get a witness? He spoke words. Lazarus, come forth. Glory to God. And the scripture said, immediately, oh Lazarus, yeah, began to wiggle his way out of that grave. Still had grave clothes on. You can still have grave clothes on, but you can still hear the voice of God. Can I have a witness? Yeah. He was dead, but he heard the one who gave him life. He heard the one that took the dust out of the ground and created him in his own image. He heard the one that 
blew breath into his body. And when he calls, you got to answer. Let me tell you today, when God call your name, you going to answer. It doesn't matter if you're in the barber shop. It doesn't matter if you're in the hair salon. It doesn't matter if you're in the shopping mall. You can be in the airplane, riding in the train. But when he call your name, when he call your name, I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Glory to God. Lazarus came forth. He said, loose him and let him go. Hallelujah. Good evening, y'all. Good afternoon. I told you, yeah, that Jesus is a good friend. He said, I'll never leave you. I never will forsake you. Hallelujah. A few days ago, before Sister Scott's 84th, 86th birthday, he said, come on up I got a birthday for you come on up I got a surprise party come on up angels will be singing joy bell will be ringing come on up leave your bed behind come on up leave your wheelchair behind come on up I got a crown waiting on you come on up don't worry about the fancy dresses I got a new robe over in Zion, don't go to the closet. You don't need no shoes. I got a new pair of shoes. Ain't it all right? Say yeah. Say yeah. Well, well, well. Sister Scott had to say goodbye to her daughters. Had to say goodbye to her family. But I can hear her now saying it's not goodbye. It's I'll see you later. Because after a while, after a while, we all gonna see him face to face because Jesus, he is the life and the resurrection. Because he too went to the grave. He died on a Friday before dinner, before lunch. He was dead before dinner, but he got up before breakfast, early Sunday morning, with all, 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 all power in his hand. Ain't he all right? He got all power. Not goodbye. I'll see you later. Can you wave your hand? So I'll see you later. Glory to God. To those that are here, one day. Jesus is coming back. He didn't come back for one. He come back for all. You have to make sure that you are ready. Glory to God. Listen, can't nobody get you ready but you. Romans 10 and 9 says this. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Not y'all, not we, not us. It's a personal I want to make sure before you leave here today that Jesus is your friend. The word says, For with the heart one believes unto righteousness. 
and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation if you want to be saved you got to open up your mouth you gotta open up your heart you got to speak his word not some preacher's word not some church's word but his word and if you hear I want you to bow your heads I want everybody to bow your heads let me tell you something about salvation you only save once you don't have to be saved two and three times he died once you only be saved once so it doesn't matter if I ask you to do something I ain't gonna do it because I'm already saved just be obedient for the sake that somebody might be sitting right next to you and don't tell me you're so holy and you're so righteous you can't repeat what I'm asking you to say you can be helping somebody to get saved so you bow your heads with us what we want you to do is we're going to pray what we call the sinner's prayer not no magic formula I'm just going to pray the word of God and help you no, you see, no baby's been born themselves somebody had to bring them into the world so we're about to have a new birth in here repeat after me Lord I come as a sinner I repent of my sins I confess Jesus as Lord of my life I believe in God that you raised Jesus from the dead this I confess because I believe it in my heart I ask that you receive me as your child in Jesus name amen can the saints give God a praise now listen something just happened somebody got saved trust me everybody in here ain't saved today you walked in here unsaved but trust me if you believe in your heart if you spoke it from your mouth if you believe the word of God then you are saved look at somebody say I'm saved hallelujah thank you Jesus Lord we thank you for those whom you have received bless him in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit final instruction before we turn it back into the hands of the funeral director is that we ask that you connect with the pastor and the church about your confession on this day where you can receive baptism for he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved connect with the church body a body of Christ where you can be spiritually nurtured and grow in your new walk you're welcome to our church or the church of your choice amen at this time the funeral director will come and because of the climate weather we've been instructed we're going to we're going to give the the middle here Amen. Sweet. For as much and it's pleased the almighty God in his wise providence to take out of this world the soul of our deceased sister we therefore commit her body to the ground, earth to earth as she ashes, dust to dust looking for the general resurrection in the last day and the life of the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ at whose second coming glorious majesty to judge the world, the earth and the sea shall give up their dead Corrupt the bodies of those who sleep in him shall be changed and made unto his own glorious body. According to the mighty work and whereby he is able to subdue so all things unto himself. And I heard a voice from heaven send to me, Right. From henceforth, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Even so says the Spirit, for they shall rest from their labor. 
we ask that you would recite the Lord's Prayer with us together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.